Hello everybody, it's Frankie Day here from Frankie Day Models. Okay, this is video number two for my Battleship Devils. I've been trained two of my Ravel 1426 USS Arizona. So I elected to go ahead and paint this 1941. And uh, so I've been pretty much on this thing now pretty much for, oh I don't know, about four days now. I've got this far, all these parts on here. I haven't glued them down yet. The deck's been glued on already. That's why all things been glued on. Everything else is just comes off sub assemblies. That way I can add, add the uh, photo etch fittings and do detail work to it. Handling it sub assembly wise, and when it's all done, just put it back on the model and finish as one unit. Okay. Uh, this right here is by uh, looking at this uh, Arizona right here. This is it's pretty accurate. I mean, it's, I cannot find anything wrong with this thing, you know, it's, uh, actually the kit was produced in the 1930s, uh, refit, uh, and 1935 or 32, somewhere around there, and so with the split of its fitting set and, and, uh, and the paint schedule of the day, which is 5S, uh, this is 1941 livery, how she was. Okay, we'll take this camera down, I know you can see the fan tail of this thing. Go down a little slower, you take the rest of it here. Well, I, I'm going to try to move this thing in as close as I can. Like I say, this, this is all removable, comes off. The 16 inch turrets, they come off too. I painted it with this uh, Vallejo 5S. This is right on. Now, what I'm going to do is this next. After I uh, get all the sub assemblies done, the fire control stations completely uh, painted and such, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start weathering up with uh, this Model Master Intermediate Blue. That'll tone down the. Um, Darkness of the blue. The deck was painted with Tamiya XF fifty five deck tan. After the deck tan dried twenty four hours, I want airbrush. Some gloss, some lacquer on it, clear lacquer because it's shiny. I went over it and gave it a wash of Vallejo. Where's it at? I just had it in my hands here last night. Yeah, here it is. No, I didn't either. Where in the devil I put that? Anyway, it comes this bottle like this. It's wash. It was brown, dark brown wash. Here it is right here. Now I went ahead and just cleaned up the deck. It sure gave, it sure gave the uh, the decking, you can see the planking on it, the copies of the planking. This kit goes together very well. This is probably along with the USS Missouri. It's probably about the oldest model kits that is in production in the history of plastic. USS Arizona has been in production ever since 1958. It's never had been pulled out of production. It's still going strong. And these kits are very inexpensive. You can virtually get them for pennies on a dollar sometimes. Pennies on ten dollars sometimes. Sometimes you can probably you know, you can get them for four or five bucks eBay. You can get them real cheap, you know. It's been around for a long time. Now, this thing would not look that good if I didn't take off all those those molded railings the kit gives you. Because what it does hide up a lot of detail, it makes this kit look too bulky and everything. So the photo etch set that they gave me, which is right here. I bought this a long time ago. I was very lucky when I bought this at the hobby shop. They had a set of these laying around. This is a gold medal, Lauren Perry gold medals. Fitting a uh, photo etch fitting set for this here kit, especially this tailor made 
just for this here kit. And it does not fit nowhere else but there. But for this kit. There's other uh, manufacturers out there. Megatech, uh, White Ensign, and Tom's Model Works probably make a fitting set for this. But I don't know. But I'm just going by what that I know of. It's uh, 1426. That's the scale that fitting set is in. Goes this here kit. It goes, don't fit no other battleship but this. And um, takes a long time. That's all clean. There's a lot of flash on this thing. I tone it down with some flat. And as I go ahead and add my pastels after I start adding the intermediate blue to it. So I tone down the blues. So I, every part on here can be treated individually because it's all sub -sending. It just comes off like this. No fuss, no fuss. So this is a nice kit, guys. When I get the fire control stations up there, look real nice. I'm going to take the airplane. The airplanes will give you look like they're uh, OS2, S, OS2, S, OS2 use. Uh, these were uh, Burner Joyce observation biplanes that they use. So I thought that's what came with this kit. I'm not going to use those. The, the Kingfishers, they're aloft. They're flying around. So anyway, this is about as far as I got on this thing. This thing makes a real nice kit with a nice uh, job when it's all finished. I had to mask off the whole deck there and they paint all that blue right there. The masking takes a lot of time, fellas. It really does. But you know, that's what makes it, makes it look good is... is uh, time you spend to make something that once was like a sow's ear into a silk purse. These Arizona's can be found anywhere. They're, they're, all hobby shops got these all over the place. They're, they're so plentiful. Now, this is the first time I built the, the Ravel one since 1979. And uh, I think I got that in the box. It was painted in 1935, uh, pre-World War II colors. It wasn't painted this dark, uh, the 5S on here. It's more or less painted um, haze gray. And uh, no photo etch fittings. And uh, I, don't think, I don't think they were, photo etch came, came uh, were invented until around 1982 or 83. I think Lauren Perry is the godfather of um, photo etch sets because this first model was the USS Long Beach. You need the Titanic. All custom made, tailor made models we made. And he, and he was talented enough and, and uh, lettered enough on to, to make fittings for himself. So he, he invented that photo etch stuff to make all the railings and everything. And, he wrote an article to teach you how to make photo etch parts and stuff. So uh, that's all there. So anyway, this could not look good if you don't get a photo etch set for this thing. And uh, so I highly recommend getting a photo etch set for this thing. But don't, it's going to look hideous as hell. But it'll still make it look good if you have to. So this is not a bad kit. It goes together. Any novice, any kid with a tube of glue wants to learn how to build a model ship, this, this kit is, I highly recommend. And also suggest that we start building something like this and learn a little bit of history about this old uh, early 20th century uh, dreadnought. Arizona was uh, two class battle wagons, the Pennsylvania and the, and the, and the uh, Arizona. They came out 19, I think it was 1916. They came out pretty much at the end, late in the war. And uh, I think by 1918, they were launched. And by that time, Armistice Day, World War I came to an end. But it was a brand new battleship. It was a design of its own. And uh, we kept it. Of course, we all know, as history uh, dictates, it was destroyed December 7, 1941. 
A Cape Cod 97 high altitude bomber dropped a 7,046 kilogram bomb, which is a 16 inch shell, modified to a bomb. Armored piercing went through the four the four quarter deck to, to a barbaric number two and to its to the casements of the, uh, the magazines and uh, but that was it, guys. These guys were gone. I mean. I can really imagine what they went through. I mean, being bombed. When they dropped that darn torpedo, that darn bomb right down there. I mean, I mean, everybody down there was probably killed instantly, without a shadow of doubt. And everybody aft where that bomb was dropped were incinerated. So there's only three people that survived the USS Arizona that were on the Arizona. And Mr. Stratton was a sailor, seemed in first class. He was about 93% of his body was burnt. He was in a fire control station. And uh, what he said what he said is uh, it was like the jaws of Satan, all that flame, like a big old fireball came. He said it burned out all the windows and all the the officers that are up there in the fire control stations, they were incinerated. And uh, so that was a hell of a sight to see. The tour hell the tour has hell of Torture for somebody to get burnt to death in one of these things. And she's uh, lays in 37 feet of water in Pearl Harbor, rusting away. Black tears come from her hulk. And they're going to have a problem. They're going to pump all that oil out of her. They're going to have an ecology problem, real bad. Okay. Next video I'll have. On the World War One dreadnought, the Mark Graft SMS. I'll have a video of that right now. I've got to finish up the um, the sub is on it and get them painted, just like I did right here. I had them prime, had everything painted, and I got more parts. I I I, I got the prime. A matter of fact, I primed the paint already. It's got the emblem, and I had to put the rest of the fittings as I go along, but. Uh, I should have a video of this in about probably another four or five days, and you'll see a difference between how it looks now compared to what it was. I'm sorry, guys. This camera right here does not do its thing very much just as opposed to my webcam I have over here next to me. And uh, that's as far as old Frankie Day got in this thing. And uh, I like this thing a lot. You know, I look at it, I study it, and so it's not a bad kid for something that's 60 something years old, you know. And I, I says, man, this thing is, I, they did an excellent job. I think Rosell did an excellent job catching everything on, the, on this thing. They must have obtained some kind of a plan, a blueprint, to, 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 to build this thing. I checked drawings and trumpeter kit and everything. And everything is pretty much there on this. So that's about as far as I got in the big A. And I shall have more coming up uh, in a couple of days. I'm going to make the video if you are truly here and finish up the video. Okay, what else am I farting around with over here? I'm doing something here. Hmm. I guess that's it. I'm working on these things. Okay, I got my battery in charge while this thing is uploading. And then go ahead and get this thing uploaded on the YouTube, on YouTube for your great fellas out there. And I want to go out there and take my tugboat out to the pond out here and go sailing. And this weekend, it was really nice weather out there. I'm going to go ahead and take my pad out there and make a video with my tug out there and show you guys my new pond where I, where I my new sea of choosing where I can have a good time. Like I say, guys, everything I do is here where I live at. It's like, it's, it's wonderful. Everything's working good for me. Okay, this is this is the conclusion of video number two on the battleship doubles on the Ravel USS Arizona. And uh, make mama happy, take care of the little ones, spend wisely, and beware of your surroundings. And please be careful out there, wear your mask out in public. Don't take no chances. This stuff's all over with. It's far it's it's, it's far from being over, guys. It's just this time. Time out a little bit until it takes another direction for us and start going. Uh, for, you, for you guys who want to get vaccinated, that's the selection you got to choose. I chose not to. 
I got enough stuff I made from shots since I was a kid, since I've been in the military. Anything goes to this old man's body is going to die out with the wind. So, um, thank God I'm healthy. Not on wood. Okay, that's it. I'm going to try to get a live action going on that my, on my B-17. I, I, I've been doing a lot of work around this trailer to get this place ready. Get some spring clean, get this place going. And make the preparations to try and get this house with, with next to that goat farm I'll be going to. And uh, so, if I get that, I'm going to be one happy SOV, I'll tell you that. I mean, I'm very grateful I got a roof over my head, but this is no houses to rent out here in Ohio. There's nothing up here. So I'm lucky I got all this. And then wouldn't be getting this trailer, I, I'd probably be living in my van. And everything I have would be in all the storages where they are right now. So at least I got a roof over my head. I'm blessed with that. So I got no complaints there. Okay. Enough rambling. It's time to get out of here. Get the same loaded. I got to get out there to see and get my tug out there and get a kill wet. Chase a few geese around there. <laughs> May catch up that big old carp I seen the other day, too. Like to see him again. I imagine he'll show up. Okay. This is Fake Day for Fake Day Model signing off. I'm getting out of here. You guys take care of yourself and God bless you. We'll catch you on the next video. It'll be another update on the Arizona. And also, I have the, the Mark Graph coming your way, too. Okay. I'm out of here, fellas. God bless you guys. And, and, uh, Thank you very much for your wonderful, wonderful uh, views and your comments. I'm honored to you guys. Thank you very much, and God bless you guys.